components of the Carnot refrigeration cycle, an evaporator, which is just a heat exchanger, a condenser, a compressor, and a turbine, and the refrigerant flows in this counterclockwise direction. Put the numbering system as one as the input to the compressor, then two, then three, then four for the states. So going through the compressor, it's isentropic because it's insulated and reversible. So on a TS diagram, it's straight up. And they want state two to be saturated vapor, so it's pegged on the edge of the dome, so it's saturated vapor. So there is a quality to state one. Out of the condenser at state three, it's saturated liquid, so it's also on the edge of the dome. And you expand it through a turbine, which doesn't exist in practice. And you also have a quality at state four. And it's also insulated, it's reversible, hence isentropic, constant S. Their two heat exchangers operate at the same temperature. They neglect the temperature difference between the temperature of the fluid in the evaporator and the temperature of the reservoir, the thermal reservoir, or source or sink. Here you have a low temperature reservoir, and this is a negligible temperature difference, but you still have heat transfer into the fluid in the evaporator. So <coughs> you have Q from the low temperature source in. Likewise, in the condenser, they neglect the temperature difference between the fluid in the condenser and the hot, warmer thermal reservoir, the, the, the reservoir at temperature TH. And so you have Q, H out. So the work in from the compressor, out from the turbine, then you have the heat transfer in and out, QH and QL.